what's going on YouTube and welcome back to Goal Line Hockey. It's your boy Kevin Forte and today we're going to do something a little bit different here during the middle of the season. There's not a ton of rumors and speculations. We already did that video earlier this week. We're taking a look today at the, you know, the what could have been in the NHL. And I, I like doing this stuff because you look at how these teams have done since they were potentially going to move. And we're going over relocations today. And there's a couple of different things I want to talk about. So the teams that were in question is really interesting. And we're going to go over those teams. What ended up happening after, you know, not moving and how they kind of have come to form since then. Uh, we're going to look at the teams in particular that were going to move, why they were going to move, certain ownership situations, as well as maybe predictors of what we could see in the future. And that's always the best part, right, is, you know, what is going to be the next NHL city, whether it's a relocation, which, you know, could possibly happen, or an expansion team. And right now, I think with 32, we just had the Seattle Kraken come in. Um, before Seattle and Vegas back in 2016, we had not seen an expansion for almost 20 years. I mean, I have been an NHL fan, you know, I was born in 2000. And, you know, I was too young, really, for, what was that, the 99 and 2000 expansions. I was still too young. I was still trying to get my feet wet with just, you know, the NHL. That kind of took the form now when I got a little bit older. And that was, I would say, probably when I was, like, 2008 to 2010. I've been, you know, relatively following hockey for a decade now. And then, obviously, as I've gotten older, I've gotten more and more involved in it. And... I can tell you right now, you know, look at some of this stuff. It is quite interesting to see how the NHL has kind of evolved, really, even in 10 years. So the first team we're going to go over today is the Pittsburgh Penguins. And the Pittsburgh Penguins have a pretty rough history before Mario Lemieux and the uh, private investor came in to help fund that Penguins team. This was a Penguins team before Sidney Crosby and once Mario Lemieux retired. There was a lot of talk about the Pittsburgh Penguins being relocated a couple of different cities in a seven-year span so the first one was portland portland massachusetts was the first potential destination for the penguins and the penguins are having problems with ticket sales and you know driving the revenue in pittsburgh and there was some questions about you know would they potentially move a little bit more east uh closer to the atlantic and you know potentially playing in portland uh portland's always had an american hockey league team they had I think it was the Portland Pirates, uh, which was a Florida Panthers assist, uh, AHL team for a while. I think they might have been the Avalanche affiliate for a while. We've seen teams in that area. Obviously, the Providence Bruins, who are still there today. The Springfield Thunderbirds are a team, again, in that similar vein of area. So we've seen a couple of different teams in that Massachusetts area. So it would have been interesting to see another team potentially playing right down the road from the Boston Bruins, an original six franchise. And that was back in 1999. Uh, then came Kansas City, Hamilton, Kitchener, and Las Vegas in 2006. And this was the turning point. You know, obviously, they went on to win Stanley Cups and this and that since then. Uh, but this was, you know, remember, this is right around the time Sidney Crosby was being drafted in Pittsburgh. Uh, they win the draft lottery, and that changed everything for this organization. Um, but Kansas City, you know, they'd always talked about bringing a team back to Kansas City after the scouts had left to go to New Jersey, where they still reside today. And there was actually talks about the Devils moving, and we'll get into that later on today. Uh, Kansas City was a big team everybody was talking about. The Kitchener Rangers, obviously bringing a team up into Ontario. We know the, you know, the success of multiple organizations in the OHL, uh, like the Niagara Ice Dogs, the London Knights. There's obviously a, a lot of fanfare in that area. Obviously, the Kitchener Rangers uh, up there in Ontario and would have been another rival for the Maple Leafs, but far enough away where it would have its own identity and its own brand away from the Maple Leafs. But again, it's still, I think that was part of the problem here. And not to mention the distance to the Buffalo Sabres, the Montreal Canadiens. There was a couple of situations here with Kitchener that would have made it tough. Las Vegas, this is the first time we hear about Las Vegas having an NHL franchise. And, you know, the problem before the Golden Knights came in, the question was always, you know, is there enough of a, you know, a stable fan base in Vegas? Because the expectations were, well, you'd have, you know, businesses and stuff like that, say from New York, the Rangers, the Islanders play, you know, the Golden Knights, they'll go there for a game. 
but the, how how consistent is that? You know, over a nine NHL season, will they have enough fans? And we have seen, you know, Vegas was, you know, the Golden Knights were the first NA, you know, the first professional franchise to be there, and they've had some limited success in other sports. They had, I think it was the Vegas, you know, um, what are they called? It was some like Vegas Rough Riders or something like that. They had an I think it was an ECHL team or an IHL team. They have also have the University of Las Vegas, UNLV, right down the road. They have a pretty decent fanfare, um, so they draw some attention. So this was the next step above college sports or maybe, you know, minor league sports. And the Golden Knights, a slam dunk for the NHL. And now, you know, look how quickly that place has been populated with with uh, you know professional sports, the Vegas Raiders, the Las Vegas Raiders are in there now. Just a few years after the Golden Knights, uh, there's been talk maybe a Vegas team for uh, basketball could be in the works at some point. Maybe a baseball team. They've had be- they've had baseball success as well there in Vegas. So there's a couple of different things, but it, this is the first time we heard about them. And Hamilton is interesting. Hamilton, Ontario, again, not, just down the road from Kitchener. Um, the Hamilton Bulldogs were there, an American Hockey League team. They had been the affiliate most recently in the NHL with the Montreal Canadiens. Uh, they are back in the OHL uh, as, quite fittingly, the Penguins' colors, black and gold, um, which I'm not sure if that was by accident or on purpose, but there was talks that the Penguins would maybe go to Hamilton. And again, the same sort of issues came up in terms of vicinity to uh, the Maple Leafs, the, Bo- uh, the Buffalo Sabres, and the Montreal Canadiens. They were kind of caught in that triangle. And fortunately, a bunch of the franchises were making it very difficult for a move to Hamilton. But that was the closest out of all these teams here for the Penguins. The Penguins were the closest to becoming the Hamilton Penguins at some point there in the mid-2000s. Obviously, things have fallen through. They've drafted Sidney Crosby, Evgeny Malkin, and you know the story from there. The Pittsburgh Penguins have been one of the more uh, luxurious franchises in the NHL. A great fan base. Obviously, you know with the Steelers and other sports there in Pennsylvania. They are a very passionate fan base uh, just throughout the state of Pennsylvania. Really happy they kept this team in Pittsburgh. I think they would have been looking to bring a team back into Pittsburgh had they moved them out. But again, that has to do with ownership and stuff like that. In comes the savior, Mario Lemieux, which quite fittingly just last week, he just sold the franchise uh, to an outside investor. So the Pittsburgh Penguins, uh, it seems like that ship has sailed with Lemieux, but interesting timing for that. Now, this one was really interesting, but again, it was so long ago, it's kind of like, all right, well, how, you know, what was the state of the Montreal Canadiens at this point? Because the Montreal Canadiens were almost the Cleveland Canadiens. Just thinking of that, does that make any sense? It really would have been very interesting to see another hockey team in Montreal that wasn't the Montreal Canadiens. And maybe they would have brought back the Maroons. The you know maybe they would have came back in another form as the Maroons, and then we'd have the Canadians in Cleveland. And we've seen the Cleveland Barons. We've seen AHL franchises in the NHL. Uh, oh, actually, that was an NHL franchise too, but they never seemed to stick there in that Cleveland, Cincinnati area. Again, not too far from Pittsburgh. Um, but again, very you know hardcore fan base, and this is another organization where if the NHL took another crack in the Northeast or nearly the Midwest at that point, that would be a city they would look at. I mean, you look at all the success right now from the Midwest for hockey. Um, you know, look at the Wisconsin Badgers in college, uh, the Michigan Wolverines. You know, you're seeing some of those schools do really well in you know at the collegiate level and maybe it would drive up more of a fan base in the nhl and maybe we will see a team there at some point but the montreal canadians potentially the cleveland canadians back in 1935 that would have been interesting now this is another one you probably saw it in the thumbnail and you were scratching your head saying they weren't actually going to do that right oh really they were yeah the edmonton oilers the edmonton oilers they aren't an original six franchise one of the WHA teams, that was from the Western Hockey Association, one of the bigger names that came into the NHL in that merger. Um, The team from Alberta almost became the Houston Oilers. Yes, the Houston Oilers. Now again, a little bit of foreshadowing to what we may see in the future, because this is not the first time we've heard of a Houston franchise in the NHL. We've seen Houston teams before, the Houston Arrows, who were, I believe, the affiliate of 
either the Avalanche or somebody else. We've also seen teams in San Antonio, uh, the Colorado Avalanche affiliate, the San Antonio Rampage or something like that. They had pretty cool uniforms as well. But we've seen hockey in Texas, and obviously now the Dallas Stars, the Texas Stars, uh, there in the Lone Star State. But, you know, Houston was an option for the Oilers back in 1998 all the way till 2001. This lasted for a little while, and this was something that had come up because Rexall was getting older, and, of course, Daryl Cates had made it a pretty big deal that he wanted to get a new building there in Edmonton. Now, since then, they have gotten that. They have gotten Rexall Place, or Rogers Place, Rogers Place, um... And they were able to keep the team in Edmonton. But back in the late 90s, early 2000s, this building had started to get old. The team was not doing well. They weren't getting the fan. You know, obviously the Oilers have a very rabid fan base. But it started waning a little bit when the team was really, really decimated. And thank God for those rabid, hardcore fans. Because they were able to keep the team in Edmonton. And they seem to be finding a little bit of success right now. One of the better teams in the NHL. Uh, but what could have been? We could have seen the Houston Oilers, and that would have definitely been interesting. Now, this is another one, again, kind of past my time, but the St. Louis Blues almost moved up to Canada, to Saskatoon. Now, there is currently a team there, the Saskatoon Blades, playing in the Western Hockey League at the junior level. Uh, this was back in 1983, and there was some talks about the Blues. Again, a new franchise in that city, in Missouri, and they were taking, it was, it was a rough patch there for them. And then we started to see some of the bigger boys come into St. Louis. They started to find some mitigating success. And it was just enough for them to stay in St. Louis. And look what happens. In 2019, the St. Louis Blues win their first Stanley Cup there in St. Louis. And there was trying times there. I mean, they had Chris Pronger. I, they had Gretzky at one point. You know, they had a lot of guys in there. And they just weren't able to get it done. Uh, but now the Blues look like a pretty stable franchise at this point in the Midwest. Again, like we just talked about Midwest teams, they do want to keep those guys around. And if anything, they may look to add more at some point. Now, this one's interesting because we talked about Kansas City and the Scouts earlier. And they had moved in, I think it was the late 80s, early 90s, to the New Jersey Devils. A little bit more in the New York metro area. There's obviously a, a lot of people, a huge population in that area. And it made sense to put another third NHL team in the New York metro area. Again, the Flyers down the road. But again, it's a hockey... You know, you know, everybody says Montreal, Toronto, or the hockey mecca. Uh, you'd have to argue in terms of, you know, population of people and interest in hockey. That northeastern area, that little pocket there, we've got Philly, New Jersey, Washington, the Islanders, the Rangers, and the Devils is a pretty, if you look on a map, it's a pretty small distance between most of those. Obviously, it's multiple hours away, but in the grand scheme of things, they are very close to each other. Again, dense population along the coast. We've seen that kind of work on the West Coast as well with teams like Anaheim, LA, San Jose, kind of the same vein. Um, but the New Jersey Devils, who had moved from Kansas City, the Kansas City Scouts, to the New Jersey Devils, or actually, they were the Colorado Rockies. You guys are going to correct me on that. They were the Colorado Rockies, and then they moved to New Jersey, and not too long into their situation, um, there was some talk that maybe they could move back toward the Midwest area, toward Nashville. And the Nashville Predators, again, this is the first time we hear about the Nashville Predators. You see the jersey I'm wearing. They did end up getting a team in Nashville just a few seasons later. And the Nashville Predators were an expansion team in the late 90s. And, you know, obviously we've seen the success they've had since then. Not Stanley Cups yet, but a pretty profitable prof profitable franchise. And the New Jersey Devils almost went there. They were almost relocated there. And the NHL found a way in expansion to bring the Nashville Predators, their team in Tennessee. And the New Jersey Devils stay put. Uh, obviously, you see what happened just a few seasons later in the next seven, eight years. Lou Lamorello had built a little bit of a dynasty in the late 90s and the early 2000s in New Jersey, even in the mid-2000s, in the mid-2010s. You know, the Devils had some really good teams under Lou Lamorello, so good thing that the Devils stuck around because you look at the success that they've had staying in New Jersey, and it seemed like they were on the brink of leaving, and all of a sudden, here they go, and they look like one of the better franchises in the NHL, winning two cups in three seasons and going on multiple Cup, cup runs with Lou Lamorello and, and history writes itself. Mar Marty Brodeur, Patrick Eliash, Ilya Kovalchuk for a little while later on. This was a very, you know, a very, very good franchise in New Jersey. But those questions are always up there in New Jersey. 
Now, speaking of the Nashville Predators, just a few seasons into their existence, there was already talk in 2007 that the Nashville Predators could be on the move. Again, we've heard this city before, Hamilton. Hamilton, Ontario comes up again in 2007. And again, you look at the context, this is right around the time that the Pittsburgh Penguins were so, so, so close to moving to Hamilton. The Penguins stay put, and then the next year, the next team that was on the docket for Hamilton was the Nashville Predators, who had not even, I think it was, it might have been right before the 10-year anniversary of the Nashville Predators already being relocated and the NHL stuck to their guns they stayed in Nashville they keep the team there and again the location 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 means everything being so close to Montreal Toronto and Buffalo was a huge part of the reason why things fell through there was an ownership there was building in Hamilton they just couldn't finish bringing a team in and that's what ended up happening and the Arizona Coyotes, we know they've got a pretty rich history in their own right. Another team in the 90s that comes in, they return uh, as their original team was... Well, actually, no. The original team went to Winnipeg and... Actually, hold on. No, the Winnipeg, the first Winnipeg Jets team moved to Arizona. And then the Atlanta Thrashers, who were an expansion team, moved up to Winnipeg. The, Atlanta Thra uh, the Arizona Coyotes were an expansion team that was brought in. And you don't see that very often, A, especially the Canadian fan bases were extremely upset and went into an uproar when a Canadian hockey city, a blue blood hockey city in Winnipeg, who always has teams up there in Manitoba, gets relegated to southern Arizona and becomes a team in, where were they? I think they were in Phoenix at the time when they first came in. And that was just a huge middle finger to to Canadian sports fans, uh, hockey fans in particular. But the NHL was trying to grow the game, and that's what they thought would work. And Gary Bettman still continues to try to make it work in Arizona. We're seeing the same issues right now in Arizona in terms of them moving. But the Arizona Coyotes in 2000 and in 2009, there was a couple of times, it seems like every decade now, you're looking at the pattern here. In 2000, it was Portland again. Portland, Massachusetts was on the radar. We heard about maybe the Pittsburgh Penguins moving there just a few years sooner. Arizona came up, and then again, Hamilton comes up again. So this is the third time we've heard the Penguins in 2006, the National Predators in 2007, and two years after that, in 2009, in a span of four years, um, or in a span of three years, we had heard of three different organizations that were in the running to potentially go to Hamilton. The Penguins, the, uh, mm -mm -mm, the Penguins, the Predators, and the Arizona Coyotes. So... Interesting little thing there uh, that I wanted to mention to you guys. And, you know, right now we're looking at, you know, 10 years after that since the Hamilton thing. And everybody's talking about the Arizona Coyotes, you know, three decades in. It seems like every decade the Arizona Coyotes have been talked about being relocated. We're hearing it again right now for Houston. And Houston seems to be the favorite right now um, in terms of what we could see as a future expansion. We've heard their name come up a couple times here in this video. Hamilton's come up. But again, I think a lot of those fan bases are already kind of entrenched. Either you're a Montreal Canadiens fan or you're a Leafs fan. You've already kind of got your digs in there. So for a team to go in there and they don't have success, it's going to be really difficult for them to build their brand when you have Montreal and Leafs fans just completely invading your, your organization. And it's not a bad thing for those teams. They're very you know passionate fan bases. But the problem is it's kind of already segregated to where it would be difficult for you to step in there and take that role. And that's why the NHL would rather look at, say, the Midwest, a team maybe in Iowa, or maybe another team in Illinois. We you know The Chicago Blackhawks have been there for a long time uh, and had, had lots of success. Obviously, cities like Milwaukee have come up. But again, how big of a population is there? And the NHL, if they had to choose between Iowa or Milwaukee or Houston, uh, the largest U.S. city in terms of population overall in any city, they're going to probably choose where the money's at. And that right now is in Houston. And the bigger problem right now for the NHL, if you want to look at relocation or expansion, uh, we are very far from expansion right now. Uh, you look at where the NHL is right now, obviously after everything with the pandemic over the past year and a half, two years, inflation, um, most recently now in the past, you know, really five or six months, it is going to be very difficult for 
uh, an owner to you know consider even getting the money to say, hey, you know what, this is a worthy investment. And right now, I think the NHL realizes they have to worry about keeping their eggs in a basket right now. And the NHL has some other issues, which I'll probably talk about in another video in terms of the culture of hockey right now in general. Now, I don't think it's as bad as everybody makes it sound, but there is definitely some issues there. And I think we're going to have to wait till another commissioner comes in after Gary Bettman for the NHL to decide what they want to do in terms of expansion. Because we've seen since Gary Bettman's come in, early on he was very much pushing more teams in more cities, moving things around. And then things kind of steadied off, and then they decided, all right, well, we're going to do Vegas and Seattle in a span of five years. And that seems to be working quite well, um, but what is next for the NHL? And I think that's why a lot of fans, you know, with everything that's happened in Chicago, uh, everybody's looking at things that have happened in Anaheim recently, about what the direction of the NHL is moving forward as potentially sponsorship deals start getting pulled away and stuff like that. You wonder what the direction is for the NHL. Would teams want to expand right now? I think the NHL has to cover themselves right now. They're obviously at a, you know, the salary cap is not going up. It's called the flat cap era right now where the NHL salary cap does not move right now. Uh, it's staying put every season. And that is because of this pandemic we've gone through. The NHL has lost a lot of money. The NHL ticket sale prices are surging. We're seeing teams across the league struggle to, uh, you know, meet their revenue demands. We're seeing, you know, cities that have had, you know, sellout records broken in terms of, you know, not selling out, you know, tickets. You talk about Chicago, probably a little bit of their lack of success. Pittsburgh, kind of the same thing, but again, you know, kind of weird uh even you know cities like montreal toronto toronto they're giving they're doing giveaways right now in toronto or little combo ticket deals we never see that in those cities but again again because of inflation the pandemic and, and everything that's been going on the nhl isn't really looking at expansion right now so if you're looking at maybe an expansion team you're probably looking at another probably 10 maybe even 15 years till that conversation even comes up and then like we saw with Seattle and Vegas, it is a slow process. So even when they announce, oh, you know, this team will be coming in, you're looking at another five years of, you know, finding a general manager. You know, you know first off, you have to get the ownership. You have to have the building. Then you have to get management, you know, um, you know, coaching staff built up. And, and that takes time. So we're looking at probably at the very least 15 years for another expansion team. In terms of relocation, though, there is some conversation for that in the more near future that economically doesn't affect the nhl as badly um but again it comes down to who's going to fork up the money as an owner to move a franchise during an during a pandemic and the price of teams has skyrocketed the prices of everything has skyrocketed as we all know but again do you want to be the guy that buys the team and then the market crashes and then you're stuck with something that you can't really invest in those are the kind of conversations right now that owners and billion bazillionaires are thinking in terms of if they want to buy an nhl franchise or not so temper your expectations for another franchise coming in i know we've gotten a little bit spoiled the last five years but i think it's gonna be a little while but i thought it would be fun to go over the past of the nhl and again, it does have a little bit of a foreshadowing to what the future could be. Because we've seen some of these teams that I mentioned, they come up again and again and again. And when they come up enough times, a pen potentially their head is sticking up above water enough. Somebody kind of waves them in onto the boat. And there you go. You have an NHL franchise. And that's what we saw from Seattle. We saw it from Vegas. Is Houston that next city? So guys, let me know what you think in the comment section down below. What will be the next NHL expansion city? Let me know your thoughts down below. Guys, as always, thank you so much for watching this video, and I will see you again next time.